let's go on for all the improvement, which is the main improvement we're bringing this month. We have been working a lot on online events improvements and um, let's get it started. First thing I wanted to do is uh, talk about Zoom bombing. So I know everyone, I mean, I've talked about this before, um, but it's really important for us because it's, uh, there's a security concern about that. So I have two videos here that I think it's gonna take 20 seconds, um, both videos together about what Zoom bombing are. And these are articles about the news. So this is just, we didn't create these videos, just some stuff that has happened. So let's start here. Part of the virtual service, when all of a sudden, an interruption. As many as five Zoom bombers hijacked the meeting. Videos of the Ku Klux Klan process as vulgar racist Okay, I'm sorry, I should have prevented you that kind of the images were a little bit uh, super violent. Um, but basically, this is an example of basically a church that was sharing their, their Zoom events on a link, you know, on the, on, the, on, on, on the church website. And then obviously people with uh, bad intentions just joined the meeting and, and then basically hijacked with, uh, with really images that are unsufferable. So this is uh, one of the motivations why we have been working on this. It's uh, at Helpful Village, you know that we are strongly committed to higher security level and uh, we need to find a way so that this never happens. And I know that we have many villages, many of them running Zoom and it doesn't happen every day, hasn't happened much, etc. but we really make, need to make the maximum we can so that that never happens. Um, let me uh, show you a little bit here about what we have been doing. So this is another um, TV a news reporter explaining what should be done on Zoom, right? And it's also very short, it's about 10 seconds. Robin, the other best practice here with Zoom is don't share the link to any kind of Zoom meeting on social uh, media. Don't share it publicly. Just text it between friends and let them know this meeting is happening at this time. The world doesn't need to know about that meeting. Robin? Yeah. Okay, so that very short. So that's good. Good morning, America, right? So, I mean, they're asking people to text the Zoom links, et cetera. That would be too complicated. But this is essentially the idea that we have followed with Helpful Village, right? And we have trying to do exactly this into Helpful Village so that the, the Zoom link is really very private and only goes to that person um, and, and the, nobody gets uh, hijacked. And uh, this is what I'm gonna explain next, the changes that we're introducing to uh, raise the security of the Zoom, of the Zoom meetings. Part of the virtual service. What a all minute. The so that one we have. So here we go to the, to the next slide. Um, so the principle is the same we have been discussing before, right, in previous webinars. We're just doing this much better now. Uh, the problem with the uh, with security problem comes from the, from the shared meeting link. And this is what we, we were doing before. Uh, it kind of was kind of the easiest thing. Like you go on Zoom, you generate a Zoom meeting link, and then you send it or you share it with different people. The problem is if it's, you're giving the link, it's kind of the key to the event to, to all participants. If you have someone that is a hacker or a, or a bad person and have, they have the key, well then they're gonna you know, do something not nice at, at, the, at, the, at the event. And then the thing is like, if you kick them out, well, they still have the key, right? Because they can come in and do it again with a different name or something like that. So, so, so the shared link is a problem. Now, the solution to this, if we don't want to share a link, is to have a separate link for each person. So this is kind of what better security practice would be. Um, when every person that is registering to your event has a different link, so basically a different key, a different way to access the Zoom, the Zoom link. And, um, uh, and basically, if you have someone that is not nice or not good that you want to kick out of, out of the meeting, well, you can cancel. Uh, mm -hmm. their link or their key, and they cannot go back in again. They're just permanently out. So that's the right way to manage security, the Zoom links. And we're taking care of this automatically from Helpful Village. Um, basically, this is a print screen here showing um, your Zoom screen. So you still go to, I mean, you still have your own Zoom account, right? You start the meetings from Zoom. And basically what we're doing is that, um, the, the registrations uh, on Helpful Village, people register on the Helpful Village website, I mean, for your village. And then basically we're gonna copy the names of those people automatically onto Zoom. So you don't need to type them twice, which just Helpful Village can talk to the Zoom server and add them there. Now, each one of these people here 
have a separate registration. So basically here in this example, if you have this phishy hacker, right, that you have identified as a, as a threat to your meeting, well, you can select his name and then basically cancel the registration. This person cannot come back in. So another additional benefit is when people are registering onto Helpful Village, basically um, they will appear on Zoom with the, with the real name they used on Helpful Village, not Samsung or iPhone or, or something, something else. Okay, so all everything that I showed is basically something we had discussed in previous webinars. But now let's let's go in more in detail about what we have changed uh, this week. Not not this week, but this month. Basically, essentially, it's, we are you know we we're interested about two things: improving online events. One is higher security, and the second thing, which is an, giving easier access to Zoom events. We understand that. Villages have members that are not necessarily always, you know, confident or tech savvy. So we want to make it as easy as possible so that even if you're not tech savvy, you can still bring your members on. So those are the two, um, the two main priorities. Now, I'm going to be showing some screens because we have some Zoom version one and Zoom version two, both of them, these two things within Helpful Village. You know, you were, some villages were using the shared link and now our recommendation is to use the Zoom module, right? That has this individual link. And what you have on your service today is allows for both options to work in parallel or something. And it was not necessarily easy, it was creating some confusion. So we have made some changes that I'm be, gonna be changing today, showing today. And then there is another aspect that is called instant registration. I'll be discussing that a little later today. So, but let's, let's keep going. So I hope we're clear with the Zoom version one and Zoom version two, right? The version two is what we call the Zoom module, which is the individual link. And the Zoom version one is, um, is what, what you can enter your shared link onto Helpful Village. Now, in this transition period, basically, even if you're using Zoom version one, uh, the emails that are sent by Helpful Village, the registration email and the reminder email, um, is sending them to the Zoom meeting anyways, right? But this is not this is not great, right? So in the end, we may have a transitory or you know period of time where we still do that, but it's a, too much of a security threat, right? To work with a shared email. So our recommendation really to all bit is like we need to move on to the Zoom version two, which is basically the Zoom module where every person has an independent and unique personal link. In the future, what we'll do is that. If you're not using version two, um, well, basically the people from, from the email they receive from Helpful Village, they will not, uh, I mean, they will be available to go to Helpful Village, log in to Helpful Village, and then get into the, into the, into the meeting, which is obviously is not as easy. You know, we want it really to make it easy for your members to do it. If you use the new version, the version number two, people don't need to log in to Helpful Village. They can use, click on the, on the email, and the email will take them directly to uh, the, Zoom, the Zoom link. Okay, so now these are some print screens about, um, about Helpful Village um, um, edit event form. So this is what's gonna go on the weekend for your villages. You have not seen this on your websites today, right? So now what, we, what we're going to do now is that before we had this version one and version two that were working kind of in different areas of the software, we're now putting them all together, right? So what I'm gonna show here is what, what happens for a village that is still on Zoom version one, right? So it, it, you, they can create the event, it will show like this. And then basically here for this specific village, the Zoom module is not active, right? Uh, and the Zoom module makes it safe and easy to join Zoom events. And then you have two buttons. One is to do it the right thing, which is activate the Zoom module, right? Which is a be better security. But we're still gonna allow this or this other secondary option, which is use a less secure way with a shared link. So this is the V1 that we are not closing because we understand we need to give time to the village to transition to a better way of doing things. So if you click here on the use the less secure way with a shared link, it will show this other screen, which is the, you know, the online meeting URL that you have, you know, some villages were doing before. So whatever you were doing before the V1, we're not gonna take away that from you um it's going to be working this month but um but as i said we will be looking really at, at, at security we don't feel great about this method so it's something that we, we are transitioning to to the v2 the new the better way of doing things and on the better way of doing things rather than seeing this complication here 
it only looks like this. Online meetings, we have received your, um, you know, we are talking to your Zoom server. So basically you just click add the event to Zoom and that will automatically do the right thing with the individual participant links. We got a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank Is you. there a charge for Zoom version mm -hmm. two? Yes. Great, uh, good thing, uh, Joel, that you interrupt for, for the question because it makes sense. So yes, uh, there, is a, there is a charge for the Zoom online uh, meeting. The reason for that is that it's quite some code on our end to just basically talk to the Zoom server, you know, the keys and register. I mean, just because there's so much code associated with uh, just talking to Zoom. But at the same time, in our view, it's so important to set this up that we set it very uh, to an, a very affordable price. So basically what we're doing here is that it costs $5 a month uh, for your village to set up for the secure method. So whatever, regardless of the size of your village, regardless of the number of events, regardless of the number of members, regardless of anything, it's just adding $5 to the, to the monthly, um, uh, monthly invoice of your village. And there's another thing that I didn't say here, but basically in order for us to set this up, there's a little process where basically um, you need to generate some secret keys. Uh, we can send you some instructions uh, about how to get those keys, send those keys to us, et cetera, and activate the Zoom 